Hey, what's happening guys? I thought today we'd just talk a little bit about capacitors. And before I start getting all kinds of comments, this is not the end all be all discussion on capacitors. This is just a simple, basic intro, if you will, to capacitors. Uh, school is starting in a couple of weeks and I was looking through my lesson plans and for my first class uh, intro to electrical engineering one of the things we talk about is Ohm's law and then we get into the basic passive components so one of the things that we are of course covering are capacitors and we talk about the definition of a capacitor the basic definition of a capacitor are two plates with an insulator between them that store a charge. The official definition of a capacitor is a passive component that stores electrical energy as an electric field so when people say well capacitors are just like batteries well they're similar to batteries but they differ in two very important ways the first way is a battery uses chemistry to create electrons. A capacitor does not create anything. A capacitor simply stores and releases electrons. And that is the second way they differ. A battery under normal circumstances cannot release its charge all at once. A capacitor, on the other hand, can. All right, enough theory. Let's talk about capacitors. So as I said in the beginning, a capacitor is simply two plates separated by an insulator that stores a charge. So here is one of the things that we have made in our class. This is one of the first things the students make. This is a simple two plate capacitor. This is foil tape separated by a piece of paper. And if we power it up, up this little uh, tester here, hang on. Sorry about that, I lost my uh, a little electrical connector there. So if we place this capacitor here in the tester, if it will go, I'm just going to hold it in there. You can see that it comes up as a capacitor between pins 1 and 3 with a capacitance of 455 picofarads. Quite simple, right? The simplest form of a capacitor. Well, as you know, there are many different forms of a capacitor. Probably the most common you're going to use in electronics are the ceramic capacitor and the electrolytic capacitor. The ceramic is non-polarized. It can be put into the circuit either way. The electrolytic capacitor is polarized and you can see it is marked with the negative side. Put it in backwards and bad things will happen. We also have the polyester capacitor and the tantalum capacitor. These are all non-polarized. This one is polarized. But they all do the same job. 
This is a 22 microfarad. If we place it into the tester and turn it on, we get 21.45 microfarads. Try another one here. We'll do the tantalum. Forty point zero six nanofarads. So, like I said, they all do the same job, and all of these are plate capacitors, and they are all governed by the same formula. And that formula is the capacitance equals the dielectric constant multiplied by the area of the plates over the distance between the plates. The dielectric constant is a number that you can look up and it depends on what the material is. For instance, in our simple two plate capacitor, this is a sheet of notebook paper which has a dielectric constant of two. Other capacitors, or I mean other insulators have different dielectric and you can look them up. But like I said, they're basically all the same thing in the types of plate capacitors. This is round, you say, yes. But if you were to take this can off and unwind it, it is simply two plates separated by a dielectric, which includes the liquid in this case. Now, one of the next things that we do in the class is make our own version of an electrolytic capacitor. And for that, we use a Dixie cup, some tin foil, and a bolt. And then we fill up the cup with our dielectric. <coughs> Can't get the lid off, hold on. Okay, sorry about that. That jar has been sealed up. Um, since about last Christmas, so did have a little bit of difficulty getting it open. So we fill up our capacitor to as close to the level of the top of the bolt as we can. There we go. Then I will put one connector on the bolt. Maybe. Hold on. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. Needed a larger clip. So one connector goes to the bolt. One connector goes to the outer sleeve, and then we will connect them to our meter. And we'll be able to read the capacitance. So uh, there you go, a 79 nanofarad, 80 nanofarads minus 12. So what's that? 68 nanofarads in this homemade capacitor. Uh, pretty cool. So one last thing we need to talk about before we go is what's a farad? Well, that's pretty simple. A farad equals one coulomb of change of potential 
over one volt. So that is our quick and dirty intro into capacitors. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. I don't care. It's all engagement as far as YouTube analytics counts. <laughs>